Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we we'll give you all the glory. We we'll give you all the honor. We thank you for assembling us here tonight to talk to our hearts and to shed light on one of the most important human institutions which you ordained from the very foundation of the earth. Father, no man understands what marriage is about. For it was not a human creation. It came from the heart of the Almighty. You planned it and you thought it out. So Father, there has to be more than what the eye sees. There has to be more than what normal, natural man has made of this glorious institution. So tonight, we are asking for the spirit of the living God to shed light on the word of God, to shed light in our hearts and to illumine our understanding and to transform us by the knowledge of the Holy Ghost so that what we're going to hear from your heart will benefit us will do your divine surgery, surgical work in our hearts transforming not only our hearts but transforming our marriages I thank you for the Lord of the Holy Ghost I thank you for him who alone will enable us to speak truth in the power of your love so father we are thankful for this great opportunity to draw nigh and to receive revelation to receive understanding and to be lord god transformed by what we will hear we shall never be the same our marriages will never be the same because you are a living god you are restoring man back to yourself. You've already given him the right to come into your presence. You've already made him righteous in your eyes because he put his confidence in your son Jesus Christ. So Father, you've already begun the work of restoration. And so Lord, it has to go on until not only us, but our marriages are transformed and they are saved. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, as I sat down here, it, it, it so happened that I have gotten used to it because I know he will say something that I did not anticipate. I know he would drop a thought in my heart that I didn't even think about. I didn't even know there was such a thought. It has happened over and over and over that I, I have come to expect that God would do something strange and talk something that you and I have not thought about. The Lord just told me as I sat down there, son, my children, have put their faith in me and I have saved them. Amen. I have forgiven their sins Amen. and I am in the process of uh, transforming their inner life into my image again. Amen. But how come they will not trust me if I have saved them? How come they will not trust me to save their marriages? I said, whoa, I didn't know marriages might be born again. <laughs> you yourself are born again, but your marriages have not been born again. And you wonder 
you are trying to put new wine into an old wine vessel. You are trying to drive a new car. All right? That must you must have Holy Ghost oil in there for it to drive. But you took the Holy Ghost, you took the car and kept on putting the earthly gasoline in there. And you wonder why there's too much smoke in your car. <laughs> because there is no smoke in the Holy Ghost, you know, gasoline. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost gasoline works by love. Ain't no smoke in there. Amen. So you've been born again. You are a new creature. But you, it hasn't dawned on you that God is interested in saving every aspect of your life. Even your businesses. Many Christians born again, but they do business like the world does business. Born again, but still thinking with the same old mindset. Born again by still treating your husband the way you used to throw the frying pan at him. <laughs> you didn't say amen. Come on, say some amen. We are, we are here to get some. <laughs> so tonight, the Lord wants to save your marriages. Amen. Save them. Amen. Deliver them from the mindset of the world. Amen. Deliver your marriage the way you've been living it and it's been killing you and you're still living the same way. And you you cry to God, but you don't want him to save you. Save that marriage. God can tonight. Amen. God will tonight. Amen. God will speak to you tonight. Amen. About what was in his heart when he made marriage. Amen. Are you hearing me now? Yes. It's gonna be a wonderful time. Don't don't look at me like I'm strange. <laughs> I'm gonna read something to you. Something. I'm gonna read to you. I'm gonna start from there. And I'm going to ask you, what's the problem? All right. <laughs> this is an article that I read in a magazine of a bishop's wife from, from a Zambia. I met him in Canada, Edmonton, where we had gone to do Easter conference. A wonderful man, sweet man, his wife sweet. So I I I I, I got their magazine. I guess God. I don't know why I got it, but I got it. But they were giving it out, you know, for free. So I took one, but I I, I never glanced through it it's about since 2012 or 2013. 2013. But I have not opened. But just before I came from from the from, from the US, the Holy Ghost says, why not glance through it? You don't know. <laughs> so I glanced through it and I saw something. I said, aha, Holy Ghost, I thank you. <laughs> so I'm gonna you know, read that small two sentences that will get your attention. If you don't get your attention, then you didn't come. Then you left your heart somewhere, then you came with your head. I want hearts to be open. Listen to it. I wrote that passage, a quotation. It says, the secret every man needs to know Right, that's the title of the article. Okay, and so it, you know he's gonna write the secret that every man ought to know. But that's not what got me. <laughs> what got me is that there was an open prayer that a man of God was called, you know, you know, to pray. 
for that couple's retreat. Couple's retreat. And so I read the open prayer. I said, oh my goodness. So I want to say, I want to see if you will say, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the same way I said, I want you to see. You say it here. Open prayer by the man of God at the couple's fellowship. So the man of God, supposed to be, I think, a bishop or something. The man of God, you know, with his wife. Okay? So he stands right by his wife. And then he's praying for the open prayer for the couple's fellowship. And this is what he says. <laughs> Our Heavenly Father. That ain't, ain't nothing wrong with it. Your Heavenly Father is good. <laughs> we thank you for this meeting. Ain't that just strange? It's normal. Right, you thank God for the meeting. All right, Lord, please help our sisters in the Lord to be generous and liberal in bed. <laughs> The man of God is praying. <laughs> Hear that? A man of God praying. Lord, <laughs> I'm going to read again. I'm not finished. Lord, please help our sisters in the Lord to be generous and liberal in bed. We have suffered a lot. <laughs> Hallelujah. Deliver our sisters from the stingy spirit. <laughs> huh? <laughs> What a way to start an open prayer. <laughs> when I read it seriously, I said, oh my goodness, this man is in trouble. He ain't going well. <laughs> he is putting the card before the horse. Oh, yeah. <coughs> he is looking for the ultimate. All right, you want to jump on the ultimate and has no way to prepare the path that will lead him to what he desires. That is a man whose marriage is not saved. I can tell you that. Because if he can pray like that, he's in trouble. He has problems. <laughs> because he ain't going well in bed. Mm -hmm. So he took out his frustration and prayed it out. <laughs> Maybe God will show him mercy <laughs> and deal with his wife. <laughs> and his wife was standing by him when he said his prayer. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Oh my. <laughs> you see, you realize right there that the man is in big trouble. Mm -hmm. It's not going right. He's zooming in on that which he wants. And he doesn't care how he gets it. He doesn't care how he gets it. Mm. I'm going to say it again. He's zooming in on the flesh part. And he doesn't care how he gets it. If he has to run over his bride, his wife, he will do that. Provided he gets what he needs. That marriage is in trouble. Are you hearing me? I want to read 
something to that someone sent me. Someone sent me that you see I got these things here because I I I get them and they go with our topic. I'm gonna read another man's attitude. Okay, towards towards the same thing, but he ain't going for it like a lion that finds a prey. <laughs> I said he ain't going for it like a lion that finds a prey and then jumps on it and tear it apart. Are you hearing me now? Let me read something here. I received this. Okay? I received this. A man just gave me said, Rock, I want you to see this. He said He's sending a card to his wife and listen to what he put in there, what he chose and what he wrote for the wife and see if there is any lion-like expertise. <laughs> Ain't no lion business here. Here. I waited for you all my life. Waited for that smile that lights up my whole world and makes me feel that no matter what's going on, everything is gonna be okay. Waited for the tender touch that sends tingles up my spine and takes me to a world beyond all worlds where only you and I exist. Now that's a strange world, brother. That's a beautiful world that only he and his wife exist. Are you hearing me now? Now, let me, I'm not finished. I waited for your magical way of making me feel understood, appreciated, and loved. I waited for you all my life. And all that matters is that I have you now and forever. Happy Valentine's Day from the one who cherishes you and loves you dearly. Is there any monkey stuff here? Is there, is there any lion tactics here? What do you think this woman who receives this kind of card will be thinking or will be feeling? Are you hearing me? Now, he also is going for the, for the, for the big kahuna. <laughs> but he's going for the kahuna in a tender, gingerly, loving approach. He's letting the wife understand how dear she is to him. He's calming her fears, if there are fears. And most men don't discern the fears that are buried in the soul of their bride. Especially, I don't want to go there, but I have to go there. Especially if your wife is working outside the home and there is pressure, tremendous pressure being exerted upon her inner life, her emotions on her job. And especially if the financial situation at home 
is not such that she can at least, you know, go it easy. Are you hearing me now? Then the worries gradually mount and build in her emotional realm. Then she carrying a load which she ain't supposed to be carrying. And the man keeps going. The man keeps coming. Insensitive to what is building up in the his wife's soul. That is not marriage. I made this thing title Married to Love, Married to Care for, and Married to Serve God and Honor God. You can't have anything higher than that. I married so that I can love. I can give love. I married so that I can care. And I married so that I can serve the Lord and honor Him. Why are you married? Why did you get inside there? You see that? Let me, I haven't finished reading. The man did not just, you know, buy the car. See, when you want to buy a car, I don't know why I started this way. Don't just go and choose anything. Put your thoughts and your emotion and your heart feel feel what you want to talk to your wife feel what you want to talk to your husband don't just go and grab any car that does not convey how you truly feel it were better you didn't give him anything than to give something that you know you don't mean in your heart. Don't do that. This is your life. This is your marriage. This is your realm, your dominion. This is your house. This is your home. The world outside there has no peace. The world outside there has no mercy. The world outside there will inflict pain on you so easily. But when you come home, you must come home into loving arms, caring hearts, sensitive hearts. Are you hearing me? Now, I haven't started my word, but let me just read this to you. Then the man, the, the man wrote, said, my beloved, it was worth waiting. Remember the message, the words of the card? That's what he was feeling. Because I sat down and talked with him. He said, why did you choose that? He said, oh God, that's what I was feeling. It was burning in my heart. I wanted to convey it to my wife. I waited so long to have her. So now I want, to, I want her to know that I appreciate it. That she means a lot to me. Are you hearing me now? So this is what he wrote. My beloved. It was worth waiting for you. And I have not been disappointed. I got in you just what God ordained for me. You are brother who can write that is a man who means business. That is a 
sensitive, thoughtful man. That is somebody who knows the heartbeat of God and the love and care of Daddy God's heart. Let me read the rest. She says, It is written, No good, uh, it is written, uh, No good thing will the Lord withhold from them that love him. Hear that? In you, God gave me a virtuous woman in every sense of the word. If a woman hears a card like this and hears the spirit of the word, will it be harder to yield herself to her, her husband or will he be just easy? Easy. Ah, ma, 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 ma. <laughs> the women are talking. Say easy. <laughs> now, hey, man. I didn't hear a man. I didn't hear any deep voice. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> but when I first said, I didn't hear no, amen. I didn't hear nothing. But I'm here by the Spirit of God just to shed light. As one, listen, as one who has known pain before, broken heart before. Who has been wounded before, lied about before, trampled upon before, all because of Jesus Christ in my soul, wanting to love. You hear me now? So I know that. But I also know the healing love of God that makes a woman happy. Makuba, you didn't say amen. <laughs> I heard it, I heard, thank you, Jesus. I heard it, that's stronger than amen. <laughs> yes, God. You guys say hallelujah, it's, it's too deep. <laughs> So I've read one, one other card. I'm trying to shed light by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. So that you understand that your marriage must be saved. The Spirit that is controlling your marriage has to be the Spirit of God. Amen. Other than that, your marriage ain't born again. Because if you are born again with the Spirit of God, robe the cantin for your mungo, in Dani ya roho wake or roho wake, you yake or wako or yako. All right, in your heart. Okay, if you have the Spirit of the Living God in your heart. He has not come to live in you just to take you to heaven. He's come to live in you to transform you from the other realm. From the kingdom of God. I hear me now. Did he give you eternal life? He gave you Uzima uh, wa milele. All right. Uzima wa milele. Hear me now. The moment you receive Jesus Christ, I'm talking about marriage, but look at why I'm talking. The moment you receive Jesus Christ, 
the eternal life of God begins to take over your natural life. Some of you are most believers. They are born of the Spirit of God, but have never communed sufficiently enough with God for the presence of God to sweeten their inner life. Then why did God give eternal life? So that when you die, go to heaven. Is that all? But leave you down here in a hell-bound marriage in which you throw your frying pans every, every Sunday. Like, like like a man that Pastor Gravel knows. So he said every Sunday his wife used to burn his shirt. <laughs> and the moment he saw the shirt burn, then all hell broke loose. So they got mad with each other, each other fight over a shirt. <laughs> but God deliver them miraculously when he learned to talk in the Holy Ghost and then he testified in Zimbabwe yeah. you, were, you were there, that's right he said when I got the Holy Ghost and I learned I can talk in the Holy Ghost the moment my wife Burn. Say so even this morning, I'm testifying here. This morning, my wife burned my shirt. <laughs> but instead of getting wild, said the Holy Ghost told him, "Why not talk in tongues?" Uh -huh. So I began to talk in the Holy Ghost, talking about the Holy Ghost, and that solved my problem. Amen. I didn't get angry. I still love her, and we came to church. Amen. Are you hearing me? Listen to me. God did not did not institute marriage to destroy you. You know, I sat down here again. The second word I got from the Lord was that the gospel message, hear me now, the gospel message is best lived out in the marital bond. Because you are saying that I, the Lord, I have come to live inside you. I have put my spirit in you and your, and your wife. Both of you are believers. And I've come to live inside you. I bring my my robe the katifu and the upendo ya robe the katifu. I bring the furaha. I bring the the aman. I bring haki. Haki ya I bring all these things in your heart, and you cannot get along. You can't live it out. You cannot live out my righteousness in your marriage. Something is the matter. Because the, my righteousness in your heart gives you access into my presence. Gives you access into my love. Remember last night we saw the Greek word prosagoge. The one who takes you right there into the very presence of royalty. So I don't see the reason why your marriage should not be sweet. Listen to me, man of God or woman of God that are married. You have a responsibility before God. You are answerable to God to live in the power of his spirit Amen. in the power of his love and let it affect your attitude towards your spouse Amen. are you hearing me i'm not you see, i'm not preaching traditional marriage uh, sermons i'm not preaching that 
I'm not doing marriage, marriage seminars where they talk about flowers. Go give flowers to your wife that you have wounded and bruised. So go buy her flowers and take her to dinner. The devil will eat all your dinners and your wife will still be mad. Your wife will still be mad. <laughs> it takes more than flowers. It takes more than dinner. This is a spirit relationship. It's a spirit problem you got. It's an attitude problem you have in your marriage. And since you did not create marriage, how can you live it out except the creator of marriage helps you? Gives you understanding. Gives you his grace. Gives you his love. Hear me. Marriage was not given to man when he had fallen. He had not, Adam had not fallen when God instituted marriage and brought Eve to him. Adam was living in Ushima Wamilele. Adam had life. <laughs> So marriage was instituted between two people that had life from God. Amen. Now since the fall of man, don't you see what marriage has become? Dog eat dog. Bruises and wounds and, and afflictions and pain. Why? Because we are marrying in the natural state. But the natural man is enmity with God. The natural man cannot live a standard that God set before the fall of man. Are you hearing me now? Is everybody getting a clear picture? You see, in the eyes of God, mar the marriages of, of this world, that is, 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 is just pathetic. In the eyes of God, the marriages of this world is pathetic. Because they do not match up to the high standard he set. Because man could not marry a woman all by himself. He needs the Spirit of God. He needs the love of God. He needs the life of God. He needs God in the center of that marital bond. You see, <clears throat> the reason why God commands okay, that marriage between his children should be in the law in the Lord should be Christian marriage because marriage is supposed to honor God and if you're gonna honor God why don't you what is the best place to honor God but in the house of God when you stand before the altar of God and you vow to take this woman to be my one and only lawful worded wife. So help me God. In the presence of God. With witnesses that know God right there. What an honor. You see that? So if we want our marriages to honor God. Start it from the altar of God. Go there knowing exactly what it means. Go there knowing exactly that you are calling on God to be part of your marital union. You took your, your wife and then forgot about God. God you didn't want God to tell you what to do. And you wonder why things are not going well. 
Hear me now. You leave God out of your life, it will show. Is anybody hear me? Don't tell my wife I read her card. That is her card I read. That's that's the one I gave her. I read. Don't tell her. <laughs> yes, God. <Amen>. Are you? <laughs> Don't tell her. But you see. The grace, and when I read that man's stuff, that great man of God pleading for 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 the stingy spirit <laughs> of his wife to be cast out, <laughs> I said that man has failed. He don't know what it means to be married. He doesn't know how to woo the heart of your of your wife. You don't woo her only when you take her to the altar. But every day, your relationship, your language, oh, the power of language. The power of our words. It can destroy your, your spouse or it can release such a liberty into them that they are free to be who God wants them to be. Words have power. And not just words have power, but words of love. I don't want to say some stuff, but I, I, I wanted to. <laughs> I'm not saying them, that's my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> let me say, let me read something else to you also. You see, the Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundation of marriage, hear me now. The foundation of marriage is not going to do marital counseling <laughs> before you marry. For a believer, the foundation of marriage is God himself. Amen. As a child of God, the foundation of marriage is Jesus Christ. Amen. So if your relationship with God is yo-yo, you are already setting up your marriage to fail. Hear me clearly now. <laughs> if your relationship with Jesus Christ, you see, I always blame pastors. Why? Because the sheep don't know nothing except what the shepherd gives them. So if the shepherd is not giving them what they need to prepare them, to give them an, un an understanding of what marriage is all about. And they get into their marriage because they met some boogaloo guy somewhere, some boogaloo woman somewhere, say, Pastor Marius. You crazy. This is the most important decision you will ever make apart from Jesus. You are going to live with this man forever. Wamilele. You're going to live Wamilele with this man. Or with this man. <laughs> and, and you don't want the one who is Milele, Wamilele himself in there to help you. You don't want God in your marital bond to be the foundation, to be the glue that holds you and your husband together, then you are setting up yourself to fail. Especially, listen, I've said, 
you are born again, more all of you, most of you. You are born again. You are born again. You know Jesus Christ. But you are still living your whole life. So how do you know that? The mindset is not transformed. The way you make decisions, the way you used to make it before you came to Jesus. And so it is your mindset that is going to guide you in your marriage. How you value marriage matters. Marriage is to be honored, Bible says. To be valued, Bible says. And the marital bed undefiled. Undefiled. Wow. What a state. What a state of, of, of love when there is no defilement. You have been born again as a believer. But your mind has never been transformed or renewed by the word of God. You don't think in line with the word of God. What the word of God tells you, you just set aside and do your own thing. So in essence, you are not living out the life of eternity. You are living by the natural old life. That is supposed to be crucified. You got to understand your own natural life will never give you a successful marriage. You better understand it right now. Because your life is temporal. You know what it means? It's not eternal. It's temporal. And temporal things wear out so fast. Ayana. Temporal love dies just quick. You marry that, that very night. You you marry. You have your your honeymoon. Your your whatever moon you went to. <laughs> Maybe you didn't go to moon. You went to Earth moon. <laughs> but <laughs> temporal life will die down there is no passion in temporal life natural life its passion just lasts for a week and then the excitement is gone and then the man starts to look around <laughs> are you hearing me but not when you have Ujima wa Milele. Eternal life has eternal, unending, passionate love. Amen. Brother, I love this woman passionately. He ain't gone down, my wife. He ain't gone down, brother. Amen. It's fire, moto, in Daniel, uh, um, uh, what? Uh, moyo, a uh, wango. Hallelujah. Amen. Moto, ya wrong, the native. Ni moto, ya upendo. It's a fire of love. <laughs> you see, please, I may be strong because I'm not talking. I'm not talking church. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking life. I'm talking God becoming part of your inner being. God living inside you. So that when you are joined like the caboose train joins the rest of the stuff, you stick. Amen. From the very moment that your, your husband married you, his glue was gone. He had no more glue but just one <laughs> You couldn't stick no more. It's all dog eat dog fight. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Do you want me to go on? Yes. I love you. We love you too. Please.
please take time and invest in your marriage. Invest in pure conversations of love with your mm. bride. Mm. We talk love. We talk preciousness. I cherish her and I let her know. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you don't say hallelujah. <laughs> I'm talking about you. Say hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Brethren, love is real. Love, this love, God's love is passionate more than any other love. It does not die down. You stoke the fire of God's love in your heart by deep intimacy with God. I'm not talking ordinary teaching. I'm not talking the general stuff they tell you in your churches. I'm talking about Holy Ghost life. Holy Ghost love, it's reality being poured into your being like Romans chapter 5 talks about. For the love of God is poured, shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. That man who was crying for deliverance. Of the stingy spirit of the of the of the women <laughs> was in trouble because he himself was stingy and mean. Mm -hmm. He was stingy and mean. No man prays like that who is not stingy and mean. How you gonna pray like that? You hear me? And your wife is standing right down there. She feeling it. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. So my desire tonight is just to bring something into your hands. Your marriage must be saved. If you are saved, yourself, your soul, your spirit is born again. The spirit that rules your marriage must be born again, must be renewed. It has to be the spirit of God that that animates your soul and your wife's soul. If not so, you will live in the same house and you are strangers. If not so, in your conversations will be superficial. If not so, you will know how to appreciate your spouse and what to tell him or her. If not just some of you, you have no the, the sense of surprise does not exist in your in your in, in your marital bond. So what are you talking about? The sense of surprise, surprising your spouse when he least expects, when she least expects. Then you spring a surprise on her with a flower pot, <laughs> with a card, with something. When she reads it, wow, mm -hmm. that's how he thinks of me, wow. Mm -hmm. That is heaven for her. I said that is heaven for her right there. Amen. She don't care whatever it is she's happy right there because the thought of her husband is for her the heart of her husband thinks of her values her are you hearing me now mm -hmm. you must value one another you came i'm not going there but you came out of the man. I didn't get no Eve came out of Adam. And God took all the soft spot of Adam and put it in Eve. All, all, <laughs> all the tender parts of Adam, God put it in Eve. 
So Adam was left with bones. That's, that's why he's always thinking about conquering the universe. Conquering and ruling. Man talks about power. Woman don't talk about power, it talk about tenderness, love, caring, concern, nurturing, planting a flower. Man don't give a flower. <laughs> Man don't give about planting a flower. I'm telling you, unless the Holy Spirit touches your being with the liquid love of God. You will not think about surprising your wife, surprising her, doing something out of the way, doing something she did not expect, a kind word. See that? Like I surprised my wife this morning. We just went lying down. We ain't doing just talking. Out. I began to share my heart, how I appreciate her, how wonderful she is. How I just want to just be by her side. We ain't doing nothing. Just, just, you see, you have to cultivate, cultivate a sense of love <coughs> by being together and sharing your heart one for another. Amen. Mm -hmm. I didn't get no amen from no one. You said amen. <laughs> Are you hearing me now? You see? As for me, I have to be open. I cannot hide. I have to be open so that somebody can learn how to be Mommy. open that God loves you. Yes, Don't you hide. Don't. When you hide, it breathes darkness. When you hide your stuff with your Sent. wife, it breathes darkness. When you open your heart and talk with each other, it's liberty, it's freedom. Mm. She has peace, she's at rest. The devil can't touch her mind no more. She doesn't have to be suspicious. Amen. I have to think of what he's doing over there, mm. what he's doing over here, mm. what's going on there. I mm. saw him with some woman there, what's he doing? And the devil is just tearing up your mind. Mm. It pays to open your heart. Listen. <laughs> Can I talk? No. Yes. Can I talk? No. Yes. I said before, this hack, this righteousness gives you open, uninterrupted access to God. Amen. Righteousness. Amen. Righteousness is so foundational to your marriage. Righteousness of God is foundational to your marital union because when you have righteousness given to you, it allows you to come freely before God uncondemned. God treats you as if you never sinned. He accepts you in his presence. You are able to come in and commune with him. And plus, he is, he, you are born of him. His spirit lives inside you. So by position and by reality, you are righteous before God. But here, what people fail to understand, what they fail to see, that your intimacy, personal intimacy with God, personal fellowship with God, is so vital to your intimacy with your husband or your wife. Are you hearing me? Yes. Being able to draw nigh to Jesus and opening your heart to him and pleading with him to pour his love in your heart. Pleading with him that you want to know him. Just seeking him to know him. Lord, I want to feel your love around me. I want to be in your arms stepped. You don't understand. You think romantic language once you learn in some books from some store. You want them bought some so-called books and they tell you how to speak. <laughs> romantic words. What are you talking about? 
who is more romantic than Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yep. Who is more sweet than Jesus Christ? Mm. Talking the sweetness of his love for you. Mm -hmm. That is how we learn how to love. By approaching him. Pouring our heart to him. Receiving love from him. And daily spending time with him. You end up being free from worries, from fears, from anxieties, and you feel his love being poured in your pain. Mm -hmm. In that freedom that you feel in your communion with Jesus, you are able to give yourself to your spouse. I am not talking ordinary teaching that they do, church teaching. That's all I'm here about. I'm talking about reality. Talking about God. Taking hold of your heart. Pouring his love in your being. Freeing you from your hang-ups. So that you are... Some of you, you can't talk truth to God. You cannot talk truth to God. You, are, you, you hide it. But God knows. He knows all the darkness you hide it. Mm -hmm. He knows it. And for your sake, he wants you to come to him and openly talk to him truth. Confess whatever you are hiding, whatever is bothering. What your husband did a thousand years ago is still carry it in the 20th century. <laughs> what your mother-in-law did, and she's dead and gone, and you're still talking about it. Talk to God. Oh, Lord, I hated my mother-in-law when he was here. I hated her because he was mean to me. All right, son, daughter, I know about that. So what do you want to do? Talk to me. Open it all up. Take out all the garbage out of your soul. Pour it on me. Yes. I learned from the Lord Jesus Christ. Son, you can trust me with your most secret weakness. Trust me with it. Mm -hmm. I don't gossip with my angels. Yeah. Yeah. So I went to God and poured out all my darkness. Mm -hmm. Poured out all my darkness to God. Yep. And I was free. I found out I can talk truth. Mm -hmm. I found out that God wants me to deal with him in truth. Not hiding. Not covering up. Come out from among the darkness of cover up. Come to the light. The reason why you need fellowship with Jesus. Because he is light. There's no darkness in him. And he will help you walk in the light. And then when you learn strength from fellowship with the Lord. You can transfer it into your marital relationship. Can you imagine a husband and a wife both talking truth to God and God releasing them from their darkness mm. and now they are not ashamed to share their hearts with their wife, with their husband and they pray together. Brother, ain't nothing more freeing than that. Mm. You see, you don't understand. Your wife wants to hear your heart. He doesn't want your money, mm -hmm. even though she will take some. <laughs> he wants to hear your heart, your deepest thought about her. Mm. Whether you value her as a human being or you are just using her. Ah, yeah, that's a big word. Mm. Using her. Stop that. You see, you are not going to have your wife trust in you as Proverbs 31. All right? It talks about, you know, the virtuous woman. Her husband's heart trust in her. And he will have no loss of anything or no harm from her. What a word! Huh? Can your husband trust in you as a wife? 
that you will not undermine him secretly and tear him up when he ain't there. That you will always look out for him. That's your man. That's your husband. He's precious to you. Are you hearing me now? Mm. Or are you ashamed to even, you know, talk about your husband? You got to get rid of that. The law will free you. Amen. You value your spouse. I want to tell you. There is nothing my wife has that none of you don't have. You hear me now? Mm. Now this is deep stuff. Mm. There's nothing she has that you don't have. But I'll tell you why she sticks out. I, I, do you know why she sticks out? No. I'm gonna tell you why. No. Why she seems different? I'm gonna tell you why. Alright? Let me let me read something. I tell you why. <laughs> All right, let me read this one to you. <laughs> you know how I read it. She don't care how I read it because I told her the Holy Ghost told me to keep all these cards in my Bible. And I read it when, when the Holy Ghost wants me to read because they came from a heart. <laughs> they came from a heart of love. She knows her. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Here. Here. I'm sharing with you our intimate secret. Alright? Ain't no secret here that's secret. It's about love. Here. For my husband, I am so thankful for your love. <laughs> Hear me now. I'm talking a secret. Mm. I'm talking something. I said, <laughs> there's nothing my wife has that you as a woman don't have. God gave every woman a gift for her husband. But the wise husband knows how to draw forth the gift. The wise husband knows how through love to bring forth what God put in your wife. So let me read something. Because she expressed her heart and the Holy Spirit said, keep this calm and wherever you go, if I need you to read it, I'll tell you. So here, I am so thankful for your love, my husband's love, my heart's true home, my shelter from the storm. Within the circle of his arms, I am always safe and warm. Hallelujah. <laughs> Where, where comes where does it come from the glow that that glows on her face her face and the liberty and the freedom she has to give herself to you she gives herself to you all she loves you all she she just can't wait to come to kenya mm -hmm. to come and see her children mm -hmm. and that's something yes. only god can do that mm -hmm. and only god can free her as the love of God was born into her heart, through her heart. I, did, I don't say she didn't have the love of God. God poured the love in her heart from her communion with God. But the dimension that is human, that is humanized for her, is the dimension of God's love through her husband. Mm. As a human child, so it touches her deeper because she lives with a man that values her. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. I value this woman. Amen. She ayama kuba mando. Hey, don't look at me. You did something. You did something in Zimbabwe. You remember? 
he stood in the in the church and just brother oh it was you was there right oh a man praised his wife like crazy i said wow ain't that so he knows he knows that day he made his wife weep it was amazing what Pastor Gravel did. And it was God. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Says here, my heart found its home when I found you. Your love welcomes me and warms me and wraps me in happiness. I was telling my sister, my younger sister in the U.S., I said, I've, I've seen mama, you know, happy, but I've never seen her happier than she is in on this trip. Have you all seen some, some bubbly stuff? <laughs> <laughs> she is so happy. I don't know why, why. Maybe your love draws her love. Yes. But she's happy. Yeah. She's joyful. Mm. She's free. Yeah. Husband, your love can do that. Amen. God's love in you. Amen. That is what she needs. Mm. We ain't got no dime. -ish. We ain't got no dime. Listen, we ain't got no dime. But we are happier than the richest man in the whole universe. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Mm. We ain't going, to, we, we don't go to go and eat out. But on our anniversary, you know, I just said, no, let's go out there, sit out there, get eat something. Because we're always happy at home. Mm. <laughs> mm. On Sundays, we we'll watch about eight hours of Haya Rama Mama 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 that I preach. That's all we're going to pray. <laughs> We we listen. We watch eight hours of DVDs. Are you hearing me now? Mm. Because I preach the word of God, I don't know what comes out. It is after I'm done, and I listen to say, "Wow, look at what came out." Because I don't know when I stay here, I don't know what I say. I only know that the Holy Ghost said, this is it, say this, this is what you say. You see that? So when I finish, I have to go and listen to it myself. Then I can get some, some joy. So we have joy at home by just, just, just listen to the word of God and then blessing God. We keep our spiritual dimension of the marital bond first. Before the material. Amen. One of the things I, I, I wanted to cover here, all right, is the, the word Matthew 6 to the 3. Seek ye first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Right? But in reality, what is happening in believers, you no know, marriages, is not the spirit part first. It is the material part for us. Mm. The devil lies to you. The devil creates problems for you and you are busy trying to resolve them in the flesh. Mm. And ignoring the spirit part that God said, that is priority. Your priority is spirit fellowship. You and your wife with daddy God. Your priority is the word of God being sown into your heart. Your priority is fellowship with God and obedience to him. As you do that, he promises, I will make a way for you for the material to come to you. You know, most of you, you struggle on your job. By the time you come home, you are exhausted. Before you left home in the morning, you woke up and then just look at your watch. Okay, God, I'll see you when, when I come back. And I have to go and catch the bus. The matter is about to go, the matter to suffer. So, Lord, I don't, I don't have time to pray. 
So because of matter, you then you, you leave <laughs> you leave God to go and, to go and get matter to and go to work. All right, God is waiting. You come back from work, Lord. You know I'm so tired. You know it's hard and I don't know what to do. So Father, I'm gonna sleep. Wake me up early. Then you go and sleep. See that you are ignoring him day after day. But you are faithful to the matter to that will take you to work. Are you here? Mm. You are faithful to the matter to, for the material aspect of enough life. But the spiritual aspect of life you ignore it so easily. And then you wonder why your relationship don't go deeper. The spiritual is not automatic. That's why he says seek. If you don't seek, you don't find. And if you don't find, you don't have love, you don't have joy, you don't have peace, you don't have strength, you don't have wisdom. You don't have understanding for your wife. You don't have patience for her. So seek the spiritual first. And then you will attend to the material and I will make sure that the material comes to you. So there are the two aspects of, of, of the marital bond. There is the spirit part of marriage and then the material part of marriage. The spirit first. Is material important? It's important. You need ugali. You need chapati. You need the basic things of earth. But the last time I checked my Bible, he told me that man shall not live by bread alone. Amen. But by every word. Notice. I haven't said anything about the priority of that pastor. I haven't said anything about his priority. Have I said anything about sex? I haven't said anything about it. But everything I'm saying leads to that. Everything, if you take care of your spirit life together, if you take care of your fellowship as, a, as husband and wife, if you take time to speak kindly one to the other, to take care, to love one, 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 one another, you will see that your desire for each other increases. See that, and nobody, nobody will tell you to plead for, for you know, to pray for God to remove the stingy spirit. <laughs> <laughs> the stingy spirit cannot exist in a heart of love. Amen. The mean spirit cannot exist in a heart that prays. Amen. So by putting God first, the stinginess is being killed. And a heart of love is coming to you from your heart, from your wife, coming to you from your husband. Are you here? I said something, was it yesterday or two days ago? I said, I didn't marry my wife to take from her. We are in Africa. I said, we are in Africa. I didn't marry her to take from her. I married her to give. To give myself to her. I married her to give love to her. I married her to make sure that she's happy and satisfied. That her emotional needs are being met. I tell you, a woman's emotional need, brother, it is God. It is God to meet a woman's emotional need through her husband. You hear me now? So how do I give to her? I go to God. Go find me some Holy Ghost. Go find me some love. Go find me some joy. In my intimate time with God, that is how I receive love from God. You'll be surprised to see that when you give yourself to God and He pours His love into your being, He will send you back to the nearest neighbor, your spouse. Mm. 
that's why he says, you make me fresh. I'm, I'm the Lord of your life. Make me fresh. Okay? Don't make your wife fresh. Mm. Don't make your husband fresh. Mm. Make me, Jesus, fresh of your life. Amen. Love me. Love me. Come to me. Commune with me. As you honor me, I begin to pour myself into you. You begin to receive love for me, joy for me, peace for me. And all that is for your spouse. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me now? Yes. When I get happy, I go to my wife. I go pour out what I got. I treat her better. Yes. Oh, you want to say amen? Amen. <laughs> when I get happy, I make her happy. Amen. Because that is what she needs. She needs to feel free and loved and cared about. Alright? And then she married me not to take from me, but to give to me. Amen. Give me her love. When I read that first one, I, I, I wrote to her. That was me writing. But I didn't want you all to see who wrote. And I wrote that to her. When I matters one day, maybe I will not read. The one day when I, I told her, when I married her, I got more than I thought I would get. Amen. You hear me now? Yes. I got more than I expected. Amen. When a woman hears that, her, 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 what, her, what, her self. Self-esteem, your cause ain't no self-esteem in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Her Holy Ghost gets happy. Mm. She's healed. She feels good about herself because of the words of her husband. She don't need you to make her feel good about herself. She needs her husband. I make her feel good mm. by talking to her, mm. by expressing my love for her by letting her know how beautiful she is. Are you hearing me now? You have a job to do as a husband. Hear me? I say this, I said it last year, I'm gonna say it again. A man always acts. A woman always reacts to the husband. So if you don't like the reaction coming, Somebody, somebody who just got married. <laughs> but you know, he's self-willed. He's self-willed. And this, this, this. I said, well, so what are you going to do to change the reaction? <laughs> what are you going to do? You have to change the reaction. You change your reaction by changing the action. You see that? Because when a woman feels love, brother, you are, he, he brings you to heaven's door. <laughs> I got one, oh yes, he didn't say, oh yes. <laughs> but when she gets mad, she takes you to the dog house. <laughs> but thank God she might be mad with me. We've married all these years, brother. <coughs> I will never lie to you. God knows I will not lie. We have had one harmonious marriage. Amen. Harmony. Amen. Peace. Love. Joy. Caring. Perhaps, that's why I say I'm the happiest man in the whole universe. Not just because Jesus blows my soul with his love, but because the icing on the cake is so cool. Oh. <laughs> 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 Ooh, you know, say hallelujah. You know, say so. I, you, know, you know how I talk about you. <laughs> the icing on the cake. And I love you, brother. I'm so thankful to God that this woman came into my life. Amen. She frees me to do what I'm doing. Amen. I said she frees me. 
to love you. Ayo! You hear what I'm saying? There is not a bone of jealousy in this woman. You hear what I'm talking about? She frees me and allows me to love. Because the call of God on my life, when I was going through my hell, the Lord told me this. He said, I'm going to take the spirit of lust out of your, out of your heart. You know how God did it? God surrounded me in Canada. Can I just born again about the early stages? I was still in my hell. I hadn't come out yet. <laughs> I'm crawling out. I run this love. Learn how to love. But because I was a devil in the world, God has to take lust out of you. I'm not lying to you, some of you husbands, the spirit of lust is, is lingering around your mind. Mm. Let God use the blood and cast it out. Amen. 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 All right, so when I was in my hell, the Lord told me, mm. I'm going to take lust out of you. Mm. I said, well, how are you going to do that? He said, I'm going to surround you with some of the most beautiful women. My brother, I, I'm not lying. <laughs> <laughs> Canada, I tell you, some of the most people say now, I want you to treat them as your sisters. Don't lust after them. I'm monitoring your heart's reaction. Wow. Oh, no. wow. <laughs> the Lord told me one day, I will use you to minister to my daughters. Amen. Especially Amen. dealing with divorce problems in the house mm. and the pain that is in the heart of my children mm. that ministers avoid and don't know how to deal with divorced people. Mm. Are you hearing me now? Yes. So listen, this woman allows me free by her love she don't withhold anything from me she gives herself in pure joy i'm telling you some stuff from my heart i'm talking to you husband listen wives listen she gives herself in pure joy she loves her husband so that i other times as a god I'm so thankful for giving you my wife. Father, help me to take good care of her. Yes, Lord. Amen. If I take good care of her, I am delivering the ministry from corruption. Amen. 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 If I take good care of her, I am protecting myself right from being destroyed by the enemy mm. so she's my safety mm. so i give her my love mm. my confidence my mm. trust okay when you do that your wife will be with you hundred percent hundred percent because she just wants to be part of your life Am I talking, husband? Listen to me now. Your wife's desire is to be able to say, this is my husband. That's the joy she has. She's so proud of her husband. You know, when she talks about her husband, he's so happy. I said, look at her, he's so happy. <laughs> if I was some Google woman that brings shame, she will be in sorrow. She will be in pain. She will be trying to hide. She will not associate with me. Have you heard me now? So you must understand what I'm talking. It is real. I haven't talked like people talk about marriage. I'm talking in dealing with problems. I'm talking things that are not normally talked. And this, this is what is destroying marriages. The things that are not said. But I say them. Why? Because God delivered me. God poured his love in me. God gave me a wife that loves me. And I cherish her. So I'm free to say them. 
children of the others can be healed. Amen. One day I'll share my testimony. How I came to be born again. Man, one day I'll let her talk. Mm. She, but I, I know she's never. How can you don't let mama talk? Stop. Mama is a lover. <laughs> she's never going to preach. But one day she will share her testimony. <laughs> then you understand. Wow. Father. What a glory. What a testimony. What a witness she is of your grace and mercy. When we married, the song was Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. And I want to thank you and praise you too. For your grace and mercy brought me through. That's my song. That is a song. It took the grace of God to bring me through. The grace of God to bring me through. I never thought I would marry this woman. I thought my time was past. Because I met her in 69, I don't know, I'm going there. I said, I don't want to go there, I'm going there. No, I, I, I want to withdraw, I want to withdraw. No. <laughs> I'm already in. I'm already in. All right? 69, we met and we fell in love. I taught my wife in school. I taught her French. I was a French teacher. She was in my class. You hear me now? And I met her. She's the only woman my mother, my my grandmother approved for me to marry. <laughs> this is the night. Are you hearing me now? Mm -hmm. And then we went our separate ways. Ah. Ah. I lost something. I lost something. It took over close to 37 years before we came back together. Only God could have brought this woman back to me. Mm. Only God. God alone brought this woman to me. Mm. Because I never knew that I would ever marry her. She was gone. You hear me now? Please. Take care of your spouses. Right? Love your husband. Love your wife. Mm. This is what you need to live the gospel of Jesus Christ in your marriage. Mm. God will bless you. Those of you that have known the pain of divorce, and tell you something. I have been through it. My wife has been through it. Mm. But look at the love we share together. Mm -hmm. I am right there close to heaven's door. I ain't going in there yet, but I'm right there. <laughs> I'm right near heaven. Because of the joy we feel, we have. Mm. The love we feel. My wife will say, so, you know, if I had not married you, I wouldn't have known that Doha the town. <laughs> mama, mama, we lost, we lost you. <laughs> this, this is no Zulu. This is, <laughs> this is not Zulu. This is this is Swahili. This is Doha in Doha the town. <laughs> So, brother, ah, uh, uh, no, let me finish it. Okay, let me finish it because I'm, I'm gonna say something interesting. I didn't talk, I didn't think I'll read it, but let me read it. Let me read this because it's very important. Not this one. 
Let me see if I will get this and read this to you. <laughs> I keep these things because they came from the depths of my heart expressing how I feel about my wife and I always cry to God to give me words to write to him and God has never failed me is it what, what I, I chose falling in love with you is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Whether we are laughing and enjoying each other's company or spending quiet moments in each, in each other's arms, the times we share are the best times in my life. Give me forever and I still couldn't find the words to tell you all the ways you make my life complete. And I tell you something, this woman completes me. You know that we are complete in Christ. But in a dimension, this woman completes me. I am content Amen. with my wife. Amen. Amen. You know why I say these things? I want to create by the Holy Ghost a thirst in your heart. Mm -hmm to follow my footsteps in loving your wives. Amen. In loving God and loving your wives. Amen. I'm not ashamed to say follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Because I know what I walk in. Amen. I know who lives inside me. Amen. I know I'm not the one talking to you. It's the Holy Ghost talking to you. Amen. Amen. Here. You make my life complete. But there is one thing I can do. And that is love you with all my heart for always Merry Christmas now then I wrote I always choose cards that convey the deepest thing in my heart to her. I don't choose ordinary cards I pray as a God give me something for my wife let her feel my heart for her. then after that I write with my own hand what the overflow in my heart to learn to write things to your wife learn to write things to your husband don't be afraid don't be afraid to let open your heart and say the things you've always wanted to say to him or say to her that you always feel ashamed you feel awkward <laughs> feel awkward you marry the woman she sleeps in your bed and you feel awkward to open your heart to her. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I write. Says, with, uh, with all my heart for always. And that is why the only thing I need for Christmas is to have you always with me. For, the Christ, for, for me, Christmas means two people. Jesus and my bride. Amen. See that? That's what it means. <laughs> well, you are going back on fire, man. <laughs> of course, there are family members and wonderful friends, but for me, it's Jesus and you. Amen. That is why I say to you, my beloved bride, Merry Christmas and a very wonderful and happy and prosperous new year. Would you in my life, I can truly say with contentment and gladness of heart, in Swahili, I can say in Swahili, in Doha Nitaan. <laughs> There is Swahili in my car. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yes. Listen, this thing is real. What you sense from me is real, brother. 
it is joyful. I am happy. Mm -hmm. You can see the joy that comes from my soul. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I know God did not intend for marriage to destroy us. Mm -hmm. But it's an opportunity for us to enjoy each other in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Don't take God out of your marriage. You will never enjoy it. Mm -hmm. When you take God the knowledge of God, the presence of God out of your marriage. Brother, you have nothing to be happy about except the material. And the material never kept a marriage going. As soon as the material withers and doesn't flow anymore, you become like Job's wife. Boogaloom. So Job, uh, the butter is gone. The honey is gone, and me too, I'm gone. <laughs> Are you hearing me? I love each one of you. My prayer for you and those, I mentioned those who had been through divorce. Listen, divorce, I had to learn this from God because my pastor in Canada. They were treating me as a second-class citizen because my heart was broken and I was divorced. And that's not that. Mm -hmm. You see that? It goes on in the house of God. Mm -hmm. When people see some, someone who, who is divorced, there's a stigma. Mm -hmm. There's a way they behave mm -hmm. towards them. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me now? Yeah. And so the person feels like he don't belong there. So even, even to minister to, to serve in the house of God you know they didn't want me because I was divorced mm -hmm. and that's something mm -hmm. so I went to God I said God didn't you call me he said yeah I called you but how come my pastor treats me like you know I, I can't I don't belong to the ministry he said son divorce is not the unpardonable sin mm -hmm. you hear that Yes. It is not the unpardonable sin. Yes. It's not the sin of blasphemy. Mm -hmm. It is sin. It is sin. I forgive sin. Mm -hmm. I heal broken hearts. I restore. Are you hearing me? I restore. Mm -hmm. I want you now. Listen, hear what God told me. I allowed you to suffer the pain here. I allow you to suffer the pain and the shame of divorce. Two big words, pain and shame. There was one thing I went through that I said, God, I wish I had been a devil. I'm not lying to a do God. I wish I had been a devil. And then they say they don't want me. See that? I wish I had done some evil thing. Then when they divorced me, I'll be all right. Because I deserved it. You see that? But Father, I told them, Father, you know. You know how you've raised me. You know, God, even in the midst of my pain, you told me to love. You told me still to take care. So, Father, why? what God told me. Son, uh, was I a sinner? <laughs> when I, <laughs> was I a sinner for them to put me on the cross? Did I do anything wrong? Don't you read Bible? That there was no, no, no guilty, no, no filthy thing you know, heard from my mouth. I was righteous. Yet I was put to shame. I suffered shame. They beat me. I suffered pain and anguish. Son, there are things you are, have, you are going to have to go through. Not because you need it, but for my sake. For the call of God. I'm going to send you to, to broken lot. I'm going to send you to broken lives. To lives that are hurt, that are in pain. So that you can go alongside of them and open your heart and tell them what they did to you because you loved. And then how I healed you. 
how I restored you and how I appointed you a minister of mine. Are you here? It's not everything you will encounter in life that you had to. That was necessary for you. But God allowed you to go through it for his own divine purpose. Amen. To make you a human being. Amen. To make you a human being that can feel the pain of others. As I am right now, when I see anybody going through divorce and their heart is bleeding, I bleed. Brother, I'll come close to you right now and put my arms around you. I bleed. I feel the pain. See that? This is ministry. They call Jesus the wounded healer. I, uh, by his stripes, we are healed. By what he endured, others had healing. Hear that? Now when I share my pain and my shame, wow, you get hope. That is ministry. Out of your pain comes healing for others. Out of your shame comes glory for others. You will make it in your marriage. If you have gone through it, listen, come back to God. If, if you have been broken through divorce, come back to God. Cry in the arms of God. Pour your heart in the arms of God. God will not hurt you. God will not wound you. God will take you and put you piece by piece together and heal your broken heart. God will restore you and God will bring love in your life again. But listen to me, when you go through divorce, don't rush back out into marriage. No, you are not ready. Give God time to heal the broken heart. Amen. Don't make the mistake because the pain is not gone. When you rush into another relationship, while the first one is not healed, the, 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 the consequence of the first one is not dealt with brother, you are going to meet it again. Because the very next moment, the man who is an angel in your eyes begins to misbehave. It brings back the old memories. And it creates suspicion. It creates regret. It creates sorrow. I'm talking good. You don't have to say amen. Because I'm talking out of experience. It creates all the hopelessness. Ah, did I make a mistake again? Ah, I wish I had waited. Ah, God. Don't put yourself through that. Pray in the Holy Ghost. God, the pain is deeper than what your mind can, can, can father. Pray in the spirit. He alone can get to the pit of your being and heal the heart. God is able to drink the poison out of your broken heart. He will take away the poison out of your, your, your uncomfortable experience. Your painful as God will take the poison out of you. Right now, I'm talking about my shame and my pain and I'm happy. Hallelujah. Yeah, we talk about my pain and my shame. And I'm happy. Why? The poison has been drained. Amen. God took the poison out. So when I remember, I have joy because of the grace of God, the mercy of God, the goodness of God that came into my pain. Are you hearing me now? There are a lot of things I can talk, but I have said many things. Now, let me conclude by reading this and then we go. A small sheet of paper I took, I put here. What I'm going to read. Go home. Thank you, Jesus. 
Has anybody gotten anything out of it so far? Yes. Any blessing in your soul? Yes. Mm -hmm. Here. I'm going to read this to you. Small paper. I wrote this in 2008. 9 o'clock, between 9 and 10. I wrote it. And I put God separate in your Bible. Well, let us start in my Bible. <laughs> because I don't know when I'll, I'll read something to somebody. Alright? So let me read this. A man or a woman may build a house but fail to build a home. I hear you may purchase a house, you and your husband, beautiful house, beautiful house, but you fail to make a home out of that brick and mortar that you purchase. But that is not a home, it's a house. Are you hearing me follow me? Because you are, when you marry or whatever, you have to build a home. You and your husband have to build something, a home. You purchase the house, you haven't made a home out of it yet. It's a house. You go to a house. Some people have houses, they don't have homes. But when they go home, it's all hell. Their home environment is hell. Pain, fight, lack. That's not the that's not the home. That's just a house. Listen. A man may build a house, but fail to build a home. And usually, many married couples struggle to build a house, but fail to make a home out of the house they build or purchase. Because a house is but a visible physical structure of wood and concrete. That is a house. Phys physical, a visible physical structure of wood, of concrete. That is, that is a house. You purchased it. It was on the market. You purchased it. Or you rented it. But that is not yet a home. So what is a home? But a home is the loving, the living, the words. A home is the living, loving, breathing, caring, and understanding relationship that exists between a man and his wife. Notice the nature of the relationship. It's alive, living. It is loving. It is breathing. There is life in it. Breathing is not dead. Breathing, caring, and understanding relationship that exists between a man and his wife and which flows from their relationship of obedience and submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Your relationship that flows from your submission and obedience to Jesus Christ. A Christian. Okay? <coughs> to Jesus Christ and to each other. Providing in this way an atmosphere of mutual trust, love and care, spiritual stability, and emotional security for each member of the family to grow and flourish in. <coughs> 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 
So a home is an environment. An environment you create out of the relationship between the spouse, the husband and the wife relationship. Their interaction, their caring attitude, their loving attitude, their understanding of each other's pain and need. All that working together to create an atmosphere of love, of peace, of harmony, of security, where each member of the family feels accepted, feels confident to come from outside to when he knows when he comes home, not when he comes to the house, he comes home, the father is there to welcome him. The mother is there to welcome them. The relationship he expects is care, love. The child grows in that environment. See that? So here, for each one, each member of the family to grow and flourish in. Love, joy, and peace is the air. You know that song, this is the air I breathe. Your holy presence. Okay, so love, joy, and peace is the air the good home provides. Right? provides the family to breathe and for the nurturing of each member. A good home is a blessing from the Lord. Therefore seek to build a home and not just a house. Husband and wife relationship is the bedrock of the family. The bedrock of the family, of the home. If you, you both hate each other and tear each other apart, you have no home. You have a place of destruction. The family, the children's emotional life will be tormented. God, that's all they know. Strife, fight, turn apart each other, each other. You don't need that. To marry and to have children is a heavy responsibility. That's why we need God with us, Emmanuel, in our home. Right? We need Emmanuel in our home. I pray for each one of you that you will understand the responsibility that faces you. If you are a single person, single male, single female, single woman, single you know, you know, man, your security is not so much striving to grab a man before your biological you know, uh, clock dies. Amen. That is not your priority. Your priority is to draw nigh to the God of all who created you and redeemed you. Amen. Draw nigh for security. Draw nigh to know God so that He can take care of your emotional needs. Did God create single people or not? Did He create them? Was it evil? Did He create evil things? There is a purpose why we were created single, single, single. And then He joins us into the marital bond. Right? So God did not create you single to be lonely. Mm. Okay. He didn't create you single to be lonely. Okay. Most single people are lost, even in the church. 
because they don't know the purpose of being sent. They don't know. Okay, if you are not Bible said, he that is married, right, takes care. If a man is married, he takes care of his wife. That's his priority. A woman also married takes care of, it, of her husband. Priority. But he that is not married commits herself to the law so that he will be devoted to the, to the law without distraction. Most people waste their singleness in all kinds of foolish things that they do with their lives. Instead of committing themselves to the law, who can take care of their spiritual and emotional needs? Your sexual needs can be maintained pure by God. Amen. God created sex and He can help you keep it. Amen. If you have not come to the place where you can express it, commune with the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord knows how to keep you. Not burning, Amen. but keep you cool, mm -hmm. serving Him with love in your heart for His glory. Yep. Use your singleness to glorify God. Amen. Right? Pay attention. Now, you know, if I were in your shoes, I would use my singleness learning how one day I will get married and give my love to a woman and if you're a woman give your love to, your, to a man but in the meanwhile i'm single so i'm gonna learn how to relate to the lord jesus christ in love Amen. learn how to pour my love onto him and receive love from him when you do that and the transition time comes for marriage you won't have any problem Amen. because already you know how to express love to the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. you know how to receive love from him mm -hmm. so what you learn from him you bring over to your husband don't waste your single moments they are precious you are not greatest single so that you can just destroy your life in perversion and promiscuity mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. don't do that okay don't do there's, uh, I, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I have to go home, go home. You ate your God, I haven't eaten mine. <laughs> <laughs> but here, I'm going to encourage each one of you, Pastor John, get on the internet and see if you can get this book. Sexual Integrity. Sexual Integrity. And the amazing purpose of sex that God created. You need this book. Okay, by, by Ed Cole, Edwin Lewis Cole. This man used to work with the Marshall, okay, Ed Cole. The one who got uh, maximized my manhood, okay. Right? Maximized manhood. I gave you one. Pastor Gravo, I gave you maximized my manhood. Why did he give Maximize my mouth. Yeah, you have it. Okay, good. But let me read something. Just one line. One line. See, see. In case you've been wondering what sex is for, okay, it's not just so that you can create children. It's wonderful. God said, eat and multiply. So God said, eat and multiply. But there are so many you know, valuable, you know, uh, blessings from sex. You see, men do understand that they need this thing to be men. To heal you. Hmm? It heals men. It's the only activity God gave that affects your spirit, your soul, and your, your body. body. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the only activity, mm. the only pleasure God gave to man and, and his wife so that their spirit and soul and body needs will be maintained in joy and love.
they're here. Remember, sex was made for loving and giving, not for lusting and getting. Sex was made for loving and giving. There is no sex if the woman will not willingly yield her love to her husband. If the man will not lovingly prepare his wife so that she can yield herself to him and both of you will enjoy your intimacy. When the last time, when the last time you had sex with your with your spouse and you gave thanks to God. <laughs> it's not a taboo. It is a blessing. <laughs> Come on. Thank God. God made all things wonderful. Brother. When the last time you praise and let's pray and thank God and the time gonna happen with each other. Hallelujah. Now you talk. Come on. If God not created. So what is the shame? You know why? Well, why you feel ashamed to talk about it? Because Adam went and hid from God. And he didn't like what he saw when 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 they took away the spirit cover. And he saw him, he was naked. Then he went and hid. I don't like I don't want you to see me. But I've been seeing you know we were in the light. So they didn't see we were naked. Give thanks to God. He said, when you honor God in this realm, you will see how much grace God will give you to enjoy your spouse. You don't do it me. You don't get good time with me in spirit. <laughs> Something that's going to release you from pressure. Release you from, from, from frustration. A book I read sometime when I was in the cemetery. Uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the seminary, they were interviewing, you know, men about what their needs are. Okay, and one man said, "I would love to be able to have money so that I can give my wife help." in the home so that she don't get exhausted so that I can have good time mm -hmm. here with my wife mm -hmm. you see that mm -hmm. he thought about it my wife gets exhausted working doing this it's time for her to sleep she gone you wake her up you know, leave me alone leave me alone <laughs> I'm tired I'm tired well, but I'm not dying. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Give your wife help. Do some kitchen work for her. Mm -hmm. Leave her the clean of the home. Make the bed too. Show her in so many ways. Relief of the, of the problem of the household. When you do that, Gain some time to rest. Mm -hmm. How many times I tell my wife go and rest? Mm -hmm. Just leave it out to it. Then go and rest your body. Go and relax and sleep. It is necessary to maintain an active relationship. Not once in every thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hearing me now? I enjoy my wife. I don't care. This is me. I don't hide. But I, I, I have been delivered from the hiding. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I have been delivered from Adam's, you know, leaves. <laughs> you still have your fig leaf. <laughs> I try to get old ghosts. Fig leaves and old ghosts don't work. 
be delivered from your fig leaves. Amen. So that, so that you can be clothed with a garment of praise, a garment of joy, garment of enthusiastic love making with your spouse. Hallelujah. May God bless all, all of us. Amen. May God heal your home. Amen. May your home be saved by God. Your marriage be saved and delivered by God. Amen. May the spirit that animates your marriage be healed Amen. and cast out. Amen. And a new spirit from the presence of God animates your marriage. Amen. You find hope in your home. Amen. Hope in your husband's love. Amen. Confidence in your wife's love. Amen. May you think of your husband. May you think of your wife. May you go out of your way to help him. May you go out of your way to bless him. Do some things. See, the essence of love, him, the essence of love is not me. The essence of love is the other. Love exists not for me. Love exists for the other. So when you marry, you think of your husband. You think of your wife. Your love is to help her grow. Your love is to calm her. Your love goes out to her to make her feel she's loved, she's appreciated. Her love comes to you so that you feel her support and her concern and her being there for you. I won't go anymore, but I hope I have said something to somebody so that God will heal us. We all need healing in our marriage. I'm learning to in ways by the Holy Ghost how I can be a blessing to my wife. Keep on asking God to help you love your spouse. And God will be for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it is with a great heart of joy, a heart of thanksgiving, that we come to the close to God of this session. Lord, who is sufficient to teach on marriage? There is no one God. Because marriage does not originate with man. It originates with God. But I thank you so much that you've given us your spirit. Your eternal spirit. Everlasting spirit to live in us. So that he can teach us. He can unfold the word of God to us and apply it to how to live our life. So Father, I trust that the Holy Spirit living in your sons and daughters will teach them and guide them and convict them and help them build a home out of their house, out of the apartment that they live in. Father, there can be no home without both of them cooperating them and building it with tears of love and prayers and intercession i thank you father god i thank you for tonight i thank you for the healing that is taking place i thank you for the laughter that you gave to us i thank you for the joy i thank you god for the sense of shame that you have removed from us i thank you for opening our hearts to you that we might have love and joy poured into us. Father, I pray for, not only for those here, but for those who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will enable them to receive this word and to learn from it. Father, bless them also. Bless their marriage. Bless their home. Bless their relationship. Let it flourish as they listen to the word of God. Speak mightily to them and bless them in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Father, I thank you for financial blessing, for the marriages, to make this marriage, to make that marriage whole, 
to make this marriage and that marriage and other marriages whole in your house. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for my wife. I thank you for her willingness, Lord, to love your people and to allow, Lord, our secrets to be open, to be open in the midst of the house of God, to be a blessing and encouragement, Lord, to your people. Father, I thank you that you make her a mother in Zion, a mother to share her life with her children, a mother to encourage, oh God, her daughters, a mother to encourage them in the hour of their pain, to love them, to share with them, Lord, her secrets. How is it that God has helped her? How is it that she has so much joy? Father, oh, I thank you for her testimony, for her testimony of a reality, a love that is real, a love that she feels in her being. Thank you, Father God. Be with us for the rest of the night and give your sons and daughters a wonderful night's sleep and night enjoyment in the presence of God. Let them do something they have never done just to draw, draw close to each other as spouses. Let them speak unto God and give thanks to God for the blessing of intimacy. Let them open their heart to each other and thank God for each other in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you. There is nothing to be ashamed of because you deliver us from shame. You deliver us from lack. You deliver us God, from destruction. Now we live in your presence. Now we walk in the truth and there is no shame because you created this thing called sex and gave it to us for us to enjoy it. So Father, bless it. Bless it for our enjoyment. And let us be grateful to you and thankful to you for such a marvelous gift from God. I thank you as we leave from this place. Father, we do not leave from your presence. For your presence always goes with us. So Father, be with us as we go home. Watch over our cars. Watch over us in the public transportation. That God will arrive home safe and meet with you tomorrow morning in the house of God. This we pray and this we believe. This we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we give you thanks. And everybody said amen. Amen.